rounding to, I guess, the number of correct uh, significant figures or significant digits. When you're sometimes working and you're, particularly if you're working out some word problems, uh, sometimes teachers may ask you to round your answers and they may say, you know, round to two decimal places or round to the 10th or, you know, round to the 100 or something like that to a particular place value. But in working out some problems, it may not be known how many decimal places there will be. And on occasion, you might run into this problem where a teacher may ask you, you know, round your answer to, let's say, four significant figures or two significant figures. And so you have to take your answer and then truncate it in some way, so round it correctly in order to be able to do that. So in this video, I'm going to present to you several examples and some subtleties that can happen. And in these examples, I'm basically going to be rounding to the correct number of significant figures. I am making an assumption that you actually know how to count significant figures or significant digits. If you have forgotten it, um, or if you want to just kind of walk over and know the rules for significant digits in terms of counting your digits, I'll put up a link up above there. So this is kind of like a follow-up video to that video, um, because here I'm going to take those rules and then apply them and then round my answers. So here's question number one or at least this first example. So in this example, they say we want to be able to round this to four significant figures. So now all my digits in here are actually non-zero. So they're all significant, but they want only four significant digits. So that means, you know, I'm going to start from the left. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. So that, that would be four significant digits. And what I'm going to look at is now in terms of rounding, so now this is going to be the one that's going to get rounded and I'm going to be looking at the digit that follows and rounding follows exactly the same rules that you would have for rounding. So in this case, I'm going to be rounding that two. Now the digit to the right of the two is a one and because it's a one, so that means the two will stay the same. So this will become as my final answer, 27 decimal 70 two, and then all the other digits are gone. So notice this now has four significant digits and it has been rounded. Okay, let's take a look at the second example. So in this example, it says two significant uh, figures. And this is where it becomes tricky because you actually have to know how and which digits are significant. So for instance, this zero, so zeros to the left of the significant digits do not count. So these are not significant digits which means two digits, that's going to be one, two. Those are the ones that I'm going to keep. Now I'm going to take this two right here. I'm going to check what number is next to it. That's a nine. That nine is going to round the two one up. So it's going to become instead of a two, a three. So my answer is going to be 0 0.043. And this has two significant digits in my final answer. Those zeros do not count. And that's what I was referring to. You have to know which digits are actually significant and you can go back you know, to the link that I kind of provided if you want to walk yourself through that video first. So this has two significant figures. Okay, so here is one which is in scientific notation. Now in scientific notation, you actually only count significant figures in your mentissa which is basically your leading. So this is your leading number right here. This, which you have, which is 10 to the power of negative five, that just tells you the powers of tens that are gonna be multiplying, in this case, dividing, because it's negative five. But now, for your significant figures, if I wanna count, so it says two, so I'm gonna start again from the left. Now, this one is significant. I have a decimal right here. Well. And this zero is going to be significant as well. So now I'm going to be taking it. I'm going to keep that and I'm going to check. Okay, so the number next to the zero is a one. So that's not going to change the zero, which means, okay, I'm going to write 3.0 times 10 to the negative five. And now my mentissa or my new mentissa has two significant figures, the three and the zero. Now, some students will say, why can't you just say three times 10 to the negative five? Isn't that the same number? 
Yeah, I mean, technically it's kind of the same number, but if you're asked to two significant figures, you actually have to keep that decimal and the zero because you wanna display two significant figures. If you just wrote this out, this actually has one significant figure, which is just three. So it has less precision than the one to the left of it. So be careful there, right? So sometimes you do have to keep the zeros just depending how many you need in order to be able to round it correctly to the significant figures. Here is another example. So this one is, you know, there's only one significant figure that they want. There are no decimals in here. So, you know, this is really gonna be just a one. I'm gonna be looking next door to it. It's a four, right? So four is not going to increase the three. So the three will stay the same. So that means if I'm gonna be rounding this, then this now becomes just one significant figure for my answer. And it's gonna be uh, 300,000 as my final answer. That's how you would round that. Now, if you continue, okay, so here's a couple more examples. So this one says we wanna round it to three significant figures. So again, that's one significant figure, two significant figures, uh, three significant figures. Now, so this is kinda gonna be like our mantissa before. So that's gonna be the third. And here I'm gonna look next to the door. So that's a four. So that four is not going to increase the zero. So that means that my final answer is going to be this. Now, again, the question is, do you keep the zero? And the answer is yes, because this has three significant figures. If you do not keep the zero and you write it like this, this would have two significant figures, but you want it and you were asked to keep it to three. And that's how you would write that. Now, my last one here, so this one is again a little bit tricky. Um, so it wants it to two significant figures. So that means the zero on the left of any significant figures never count. So I'm starting here, so one, two. So those are my two. Now, once you identify the two, you take the last one, you look next door, now it's a nine. Now that nine is going to do what? it's going to increase that nine, right? And now all of a sudden it's going to carry. So notice what's going to happen. So what's going to happen is, this is gonna become basically 1.00, right? And then I'll have all of these zeros, okay, within here. But you only wanted two significant figures in here. So if you wanted two significant figures, so this, to write it, you would actually write it like this that has two significant figures, the one and then the zero. Now the zero to the right always counts as long as there is a decimal. And that's the tricky part within these, okay, when you're writing. So I know that sometimes these things happen and you might get asked. It's seldom, but you may see it. And it's a nice way to be able to round so that you don't have to actually keep a huge amounts of decimals um, if you're working out computations on your calculators, in particular for like word problems. So I hope that this helps. And again, please do watch the video that I pointed out to you if you're not comfortable or you forgot the rules for counting significant figures, all right? And then you can go back in here and then try them again on your own and walk yourself through it each example and then just check. All right, thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Cheers, everybody.